Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the technical forum at the group exhibit Hydrogen Fuel Cells and Batteries this year in the year of 2015 at the Hanover Fairground. At this time, I would like to invite you to have a drink on the house. There is a lovely lady, two lovely ladies walking around serving you drinks. Also, I would like to say hello, good afternoon, ni hao to all our online guests. We are live streaming from the fair. Not only we are having 150 exhibitors here, from 25 different countries. We have even more visitors at this time. Right now, we are having an EU hour. We are discussing a joint undertaking, the FCH project from uh, the EU and the consortium. And for that, we already discussed the project. And now they said that there are 155 project within the joint undertaking and we are and I'm excited for that going to hear about the findings of the inner field project we will hear about the fuel cell um, micro CHP combined heat and power the initial findings from the project will be presented to you by Ian Walker director at element energy thank you very much thank you uh, good afternoon everyone um, yeah, so I'm going to give um, an introduction to the Enerfield project, um, which is a, a fuel cell micro CHP deployment project, which aims to be uh, the largest deployment of fuel cell micro CHP uh, in, in Europe. Um, ah. uh, so I'll take you through a, a, a brief introduction uh, to the project. Um, and then some of the lessons learned to date and some of the emerging conclusions, we're about halfway through uh, the project duration. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the technical monitoring uh, that we're planning to do or we are doing in, in the project, uh, which we're hoping will create a very uh, useful resource for, for the uh, an analysis studies that are also part of the research element of the project. Uh, and then I'll tell you a little bit about some of the uh, research and analysis that we, that we plan to do. So, as I said, Enerfield um, will be the largest uh, deployment of fuel cell micro CHP in Europe. Uh, we're looking to install, to install around about 1,000 units, just, just short of 1,000 units, um, across Europe. Um, and at the moment, we're planning to install in 11 uh, member states. Um, and you can see there's quite a distribution across a sort of central band of Europe, uh, as far as Denmark in the north and Italy uh, in the south. Um, so the project is uh, five years in length. Um, what we intend to do is to have at least two years of operation for each of the units that gets installed. Uh, and during that time, we'll be monitoring those units to understand how they're performing, um, to uh, log any issues encountered, um, and also to understand the attitudes and perception of customers who have these units in their homes. Um, the data that gets collected will feed into a number of different research studies, looking at things like cost of ownership, life cycle impacts, um, market potential for fuel cell micro CHP, um, which I'll also talk about in a, in a moment. Uh, the project is funded by the FCHJU, um, as, as, as was just introduced. Um, so very briefly, um, why are we interested in fuel cell micro CHP? Um, I think the, the starting point for that is um, the, the requirement to decarbonize heat in buildings. Um, heat accounts for, um, or energy consumption in buildings accounts for a large part of national energy consumption, somewhere around 40 to 50% of national energy consumption, and a large proportion of that is heating space and heating hot water. Um, so in order to meet national CO2 reduction targets, decarbonizing heat in buildings is, is a really a central theme. Um, fuel cell micro CHP is a, a key solution to decarbonizing heat in buildings. Thanks to very high electrical efficiency and overall CHP efficiency, it can lead to dramatic reductions in primary energy consumption compared to heating with a gas boiler um, and, and taking grid electricity. And together with that reduction in primary energy, of course, you get a reduction in, in CO2 emissions. Um, there are another number of other advantages of fuel cell micro CHP, like lower local pollutants and very low noise operation. Uh, there's a potentially very large market. Really, they have access to what is now the gas boiler market, which is extremely large across uh, Europe. Um, the systems can be retrofitted into existing buildings, um, but are perhaps particularly well suited to new 
low energy demand buildings where the, the low heat demand is well matched to the heat to power ratio of the fuel cell micro CHP, which is electrically efficient, so generates less heat. Um, integration is, is relatively straightforward with existing uh, gas and electricity suppliers, so requires relatively little retraining of, of, of current um, heat appliance installers. Uh, and the, the final point there, uh, micro CHP is complementary with the wider energy system transition. Um, for one thing, it's consistent with the well-developed natural gas infrastructure that we have in many European countries um, and is a technology that extends the lifetime of, of that infrastructure. Um, over the longer term, the decarbonisation potential of fuel cell micro CHP can be increased by blending low carbon gases such as micro, uh, biomethane or hydrogen um, into the gas grid. Uh, and it's also complementary with the increasing penetration of renewable electricity generation into the grid mix um, because fuel cell micro CHP offers a dispatchable local generation which can be used as a balancing reserve to balance the inherently intermittent nature of wind and, uh, for example, solar. These are the technologies that we're installing. Um, currently, we have eight manufacturers who are running field trials. Um, and we have a, a good mix of PEM and solid oxide fuel cell systems within, within across those manufacturers. Um, the bulk of the systems are aimed at single family homes, so around about one kilowatt electrical output. Uh, we have a few systems that are slightly larger uh, that are looking at multifamily homes or um, small commercial properties. Um, so on the, on the PEM side, we have um, Baxi, uh, Dantherm, um, RBZ, and Elcor, Elcor being a higher temperature PEM unit. And then on the solid oxide side, we have Bosch and uh, Hexis, uh, Valent, and Solid Power. All the units installed uh, will be uh, using natural gas as a fuel source. Um, we're also currently in negotiations with two other manufacturers, two further manufacturers that we hope will join the project soon um, to increase the potential for strong deployment uh, across Europe and getting up to that thousand uh, number of units target. Um, so where we are in the project at the moment, as I said, we're, we're about halfway through in terms of overall project duration. Um, but really the first part of the, of the project, this shows the, the ramping up and projected ramping up of units installed. The first part of the project was, was taken up with um, putting contracts in place, um, thinking about field support arrangements and sales strategies. Um, so that took sort of 12 to 18 months. We're now well into the deployment phase and have around 150 systems installed in the field um, across the eight manufacturers and at the moment within seven countries. Um, we're now expecting a, a sort of rapid ramp up in the rate of deployment. In recent months, we've been deploying around about 17 units per month. But by the time we get to the summer, uh, out of the heating season, we expect that to become more like 50 units per month. And the target would be to get the bulk of the units installed towards the end of this year and all units certainly installed by the end of next. Um, these are just a few images of the, of the units we're installing for um, a selection of the manufacturers. Um, actually, quite a few of these units you can see over at the IBZ stand, which is just over there, um, if you want to go and have a look at them in the, in the flesh. So, lessons learned to date. Um, as I said, we're about halfway through and have installed 150 units so far. Um, all these units are being monitored, um, but we don't yet have access to the um, technical performance monitoring. That will be coming in the later phases of the project. What we do know is that there have been no major issues with the installation, and these units are currently operating, operating well. Um, we found that Germany is the strongest early market for fuel cell micro CHP. It's the, it's the country where the, the greatest number of units are installed at the moment, and has been the country where we found it easiest to find field trial sites. There are a number of reasons for that. Um, partly there's regional and national funding available in Germany. Um, there's also a, a higher tolerance in Germany towards high cost heating systems. Um, and there's a concentration of manufacturers and installers within Germany. So it's easier for them to support the units within home markets. In terms of the route to market, um, 
Initially, we anticipated this to be through utilities. Um, this has proven to be quite difficult. Uh, utilities, perhaps after the financial crisis, are not in a position of funding research projects to the extent that maybe they once were. Um, and so they've only been interested really in small numbers of units with quite limited co-financing. This has required a bit of an adjustment on the sales strategy or the route to market, with manufacturers having to go directly to consumers more so than originally expected. And that has perhaps favoured the larger heating appliance manufacturers in the project, like Valent and Bosch, who have existing channels to market. Um, system capital cost is certainly still the big challenge. Um, we, even with Enerfield funding, uh, it's difficult to um, overcome that at the moment. Um, but it's large, larger volumes that in the end will be required to drive down um, system capital cost. Um, and that's going to require continued public finance or public funding. I have some lessons learned on some of the research work we've been doing on supply chain analysis and on codes and standards. But I think maybe in the interest of time, I might uh, skip through those and, and talk about some of the technical monitoring we're doing within the project. Um, so all of the units will be, will be monitored, at least um, in terms of aggregate performance on a monthly level. Um, so heat produced, gas consumed, hours of operation. Um, but 10% will be monitored very, in a very detailed way. Um, and those units will be fitted with uh, the, the Calyx box, which is a, a data logger and consumer gateway device that was developed in the German Calyx project, a sort of predecessor uh, fuel cell micro CHP installation project. Um, and that allows data to be collected from a, a wide range of sensors um, and for the monitoring partners to access that data remotely. Um, and so we're hoping that the detailed monitored units will be distributed across a range of different house types and in a range of different uh, climate zones. So we can see the difference in the way fuel cell micro CHP systems are performing in different contexts. Um, this is a, a sort of schematic of uh, the, the detailed monitoring scheme. Um, and I've just picked out some, some of the key sensors that will be included in that. Uh, and you can see that we'll be monitoring the fuel cell itself in terms of its electrical output and heat output and, and gas in, so it can understand its efficiency. Likewise, the uh, auxiliary boiler will be monitored in terms of space and hot water heating out uh, and, and gas in, so we can see the ratio between fuel cell heat and, um, and, and, and backup boiler. Um, we'll also be monitoring electricity use in the house and export from the house back to the grid, uh, as well as some environmental factors such as ambient temperature and internal temperature in the home. This is a, a full list of the technical performance parameters that we'll be monitoring. Um, and as you can see, there are, I won't go through them all, but there are some, some really quite detailed monitoring that we'll be doing, not just looking at um, energy and kilowatt hours, but also monitoring temperatures of heating circuits, flow and return temperatures. Um, and this will enable some very detailed analysis to be undertaken on how these systems are performing. All of the data that gets collected uh, is fed into a clean room um, where it has to be aggregated and anonymized so that no confidential information on any one particular manufacturer is released. Um, having gone through the clean room process, that data gets fed to um, the research partners who use it in a range of analysis projects and also fed back to the FCHJU so they have a clear view of how the system is performing and how the funding um, is being spent. Um, so in terms of how this data will be used, as I say, there's a, there's a, there's a number of different analysis projects that will be going on. Um, we'll be looking at the, the cost of ownership um, and the life cycle assessment. Um, we'll also be surveying the, the householders who have the systems, both at the point of installation and after one year, to see how they uh, are getting on with the system, to see what their perception of the fuel cell micro CHP is compared to their, their old heating systems. Um, and the, this work will feed into uh, some work that we're going to do on trying to understand the market for fuel cell micro CHP across European member states. Um, we're also going to do a piece of work that then looks at the potential impact of fuel cell micro CHP on um, the wider energy system, uh, and particularly looking at the impact on the electricity system um, in terms of how it changes the grid um, electricity mix, 
uh, and its potential impact on reinforcement costs for um, transmission and distribution networks. So in terms of the work looking at uh, total cost of ownership, um, we'll be looking at um, a range of different types of system uh, spanning from 0.7 kilowatts, which is around about the average of the single family home systems, up to five kilowatts, which is the largest system that we look at in the, in the project. Um, and for each of those sizes, we'll be looking at PEM, solid oxide fuel cell. Um, and in the cases where we can't respect confidentiality if we're looking at a particular um, technology, we, we, will, we will need to look at a generic fuel cell type. Um, the total cost of ownership uh, analysis will take in the, the monitoring data and use that data on how systems are performed in different house types and climate zones to understand how the economics of the systems vary between these different contexts. Um, the understanding of the economics and some assumptions for how that may change over time, so how costs may come down and lifetimes improve, for example, uh, will feed in some market projections. And then using the projections of uptake of fuel cell micro CHP and how that's going to be um, deployed in a widespread way, uh, we will do a piece of analysis to understand the impact on the electricity system. Um, and that's going to model fuel cell micro CHP as part of the generation mix to understand how it changes the cost of generation and also the CO2 content of grid electricity supply. Um, we'll also use some archetypal modeling of transmission networks and distribution networks um, to see how the impact of localized generation from fuel cell micro CHP and the way that can change the load profile um, impacts on the reinforcement costs for the distribution, for the distribution network and, and at, a, at a higher level for the transmission network. Um, so we're hoping this will give us some insight into uh, that thing that I mentioned at the start about uh, fuel cell micro CHP being a complementary part of the wider energy system transition. And for example, we'll be able to contrast the uh, impact of fuel cell micro CHP against, say, heat pumps and uh, an electrical um, form of heating. Um, so just very, very quickly, finally, on the next steps, um, we're in the middle of the deployment phase that will continue and uh, ramp up and accelerate over the coming year. Um, we expect over the next few months to get technical performance um, data out of the clean room, um, which will feed into these uh, analysis piece of work, uh, pieces of work that we're, that we're undertaking. Uh, and finally, all of this data and analysis will feed into some work on policy implications, um, where we look at what policy or regulatory changes are required to support the growth of the market. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you also from my side, what an interesting presentation. All right, now, do we have any questions from the audience? I know everyone is, has been very, being very shy here. You know, it's, uh, it says EU Day on the program. As matter, you can approach uh, Mr. Ma no, Mr. Walker um, uh, after the presentation. Uh, he will be standing uh, hopefully around for questions. Thank you very much for for this presentation. Thank you. And after this, we'll hear um, another representative, uh, a representative of Element Energy. We'll hear Mr. Ben Madden, and he will talk about the fuel cell buses.